Hey there everyone, my name is Eduardo Arroyo, but you can call me Ed, and today we are here visiting historical locations associated with the Salem Witch Trials here in Salem, Massachusetts. Yes, you guys, you heard that right. Today we are here in Salem, Massachusetts, a very historical city here in the United States. The city is prominently known for the mass hysteria that took hold of this place during the 1600s. This all culminated with the Salem witch trials and the hanging executions of many innocent individuals. The goal for today's video is simple, to walk around Salem and visit some of the historical locations associated with those events. So if that interests you, come with me. Hey there guys, so before I show you the first location of today, which is right behind us as you can see, I would like to tell you that this video assumes that you are familiar with the events or at least have some understanding on the history behind them. I think learning about the Salem witch trials and how they originated is not just super interesting but also very valuable. And with that, the first location we are visiting today is the Salem Witch Dungeon Museum. There are so many other museums here in the city of Salem. As you could imagine, this city is very touristy. I would recommend this one because it has visual representations of some of the events that happened, as well as some of the locations that I plan to show you later in today's video. So the tour itself is a very short one and it can also get very crowded at key times throughout the day. So just keep that in mind. I will still recommend this place because of the reenactment as well as for the guided tour of the dungeon downstairs which gives you some really good information. And as you can see there is also a photo opportunity right there. Those are called pillories and were used to restrain and publicly shame criminals back in the day. And you best believe that people accused of witchcraft fit this category. So you can take a picture just like this. We have made it here to the original location of the Salem Witch Jail. That building behind me is 10 Federal Street and we are right in front of the Witch City Mall for reference. It was known as the Salem Witch Jail because it housed the accused of witchcraft in 1692 during the Salem Witch Trials. Nowadays it is an office building and it looks pretty normal from what I've seen. There is no indication on the outside that this was a jail at some point and it has no other things that associated to the witch trials that occurred in this city. That is with the exception of a small plaque located on the outside of the building. If we come closer, we will see that there is a marker on the side of this wall that tells people of the historical significance of this place. The plaque reads Old Witch 
jail. And yes, I believe that they used to use G as J back in the day. It says built in 1684, abandoned in 1813, and raced in 1956. To race means to destroy. So this piece of history was almost completely destroyed. I say almost because remnants of the witch dungeon were indeed found during this process. It continues to say, in 1692, during the Salem witch trials, many of the accused were imprisoned here. The Salem Witch Jail is the place that is replicated in the Witch Dungeon Museum, which we visited earlier. And the beam that they have on display on the Witch Dungeon Museum comes from this exact location. The more you know. Right now, we are here at Proctor's Ledge, where the accused of witchcraft were executed. For a very long time, the exact location of the hanging executions remained unknown. But in 2016, a group of scholars from Salem State University got together to figure it out. From their research, it was determined that Proctor's Ledge was the exact location of the hanging executions. So on July 19, 2017, at the 325th anniversary of these executions, this memorial that you see behind me was dedicated. The memorial itself is actually pretty small, as you can see. I think that's one of the issues that people have with this place, the fact that it is so small. Appropriately, this memorial includes the names of the 19 people who were hanged. As you can see, it goes all the way around over there. If you come closer, you can see that not only does it include the names of the people who were executed, but it also includes the exact date of the execution. There is also a single oak tree planted right here in the middle of the memorial. The tree symbolizes both endurance and dignity. Obviously, this monument is very, very sad, but also very dark. Knowing that this is the exact location where those innocent people were executed. I think it was very important that this memorial was built so that we never forget. Up next, we are visiting the oldest cemetery here in the city of Salem, Massachusetts. That right there, you guys, is Charter Street Cemetery. We are, in fact, in Charter Street, but it is also known as the Old Burying Point. It used to be the case where anyone could just enter the cemetery at any time, but nowadays they actually require you to get a ticket online, which is free, but that's just to avoid thousands of people roaming this cemetery. Charter Street Cemetery, as I mentioned earlier, is the oldest cemetery here in the city of Salem, Massachusetts, and also the resting place to many notable past Salem residents. Among those buried in here is John Hawthorne, one of the leading judges during the Salem Witch Trials. And I am specifically looking for his tomb. And there it is, you guys. As you can clearly see, it has been placed in this block of granite to help protect and preserve it. If we look closer, we can see that his tomb is inscribed in an older version of English. When I learned that one of the judges was buried in here, it made me wonder, right, where were the victims from the witch trials buried? You know, I can tell you that part of the sentence given to those people accused of witchcraft was the denial of a proper 
burial. So till this day, people are not sure exactly where the bodies of the victims rest. That information is lost to history. However, in 1992, approximately 300 years after those events, a monument was finally dedicated and it is actually adjacent to the cemetery. It is right there behind me. We'll make our way there next. The last location that I want to show you today is the Salem Witch Trials Memorial, which is right behind me. The memorial itself is relatively small and simple, but it is very meaningful indeed. It consists of three four foot tall granite walls surrounding this small area, as you can see right there. Along the wall, there are granite benches, as you can see right here, representing each of the victims. On each of the benches you will see the name of the victim, the means of execution, and the date of the execution itself. As you've been able to see there are little offerings left on each of the benches by people who are passing by and honoring the victims which is really nice to see. Right here in these rocks you will find words from the accused taken directly from court transcripts. As you can see there is a lot of mud so it's really hard to see but I'll give you some examples. I am no witch. I am wholly innocent of such wickedness. I do plead not guilty. God knows I am innocent. Oh Lord help me. I know it was hard to see because of all the mud, but the pleading ranges all the way from I'm not guilty to I am not a witch, all the way to the people pleading not to the court anymore, but to their God. It is really hard not to get choked up when reading those, knowing that those were real innocent people who, regardless, were still punished. So one of the interesting things that I've heard from tourist groups around this area is the fact that this side of the fence is open that is not by accident this over here is charter street cemetery in fact if you take a look right there that is the grave or the tombstone of one of the judges from the salem witch trials so they get to see as all the people make their way here year over year to honor the victims who were wrongfully accused. The more you know. And with that you guys we have made it to the end of today's video a few words from me i think learning about history is super important to avoid things like this from happening again i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did make sure to click on the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to check out more cool and interesting travel videos just like this one and always remember to be kind have an open mind I'll see you next time.